If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. Welcome back to the final day of race day for the FINA World Championship, sponsored by Speedo. I'm your host, Tiffany Elias. Thanks for joining us this past week. It's been an incredible eight days of racing. Let's bring in Jeff Cummings live from Barcelona to recap the final day. Jeff, no world records today, and Team USA with a heartbreaking DQ to end the meet. Bring us some perspective from the pool deck after that 400 uh, medley relay DQ. Well, I got to tell you, I couldn't tell what was going on in the uh, in the pool for the last, I guess, two meters of that 100 backstroke because from my perspective, I can't see the finish. So at the time that Grievers was about to finish, I was looking at the scoreboard. And so that's where I was looking for uh, to see who was touching first. And so when I saw that, um, and at the same time, I was doing my live observation. So I was typing in, I think it was 5307 for Matt Grievers. And then by that time, Cordes and everybody else was almost right at the 50 meter mark for their swim. So I was, you know, totally unaware of it and uh, kind of heard a little bit of kind of a weird reaction from the crowd at the, after their backstroke, but just didn't think any of it. Then, you know, the, the race went on and then they finished in about, a, you know, about a minute after uh, the race. You know, it was a little bit longer than usual for official for it to be official. And then they showed the DQ and just stunning just stunning from everybody and of course the French are going crazy and there's a lot of French here so they were going mad for that and just surprised and then of course Japan happy because they moved up to third so uh, the United States team just looked shocked frozen they couldn't move they couldn't understand and um, yeah it's sad it's, it's for Kevin Cordes I'm sure this is something he's got to live with but uh, it's an experience that he will never forget and he will use going forward uh, yeah as a rookie that's really always difficult and and like you mentioned before the show, it's it hasn't been since 2007 that the U.S. has been disqualified in a major relay like this. So it'd be interesting if you have a chance to talk to some of those swimmers after the meet to, to bring us back some perspective. We'll try to do that. All right, well, let's get started with the 50s to start the night for both men and women. On the men's side, France held their 1-2 position, but Matt Grievers moved up to third behind Camille Lacour and Jeremy Stravius. Uh, no surprises here in this event. I'd rather discuss the women's 50 breaststroke. Now, Jeff, yesterday you were right in saying Rula Malatiti is not dominant in the 50 like she is in the 100, but a lot of storylines here. Yulia Efimova takes the gold, 29.5, just a few 100s off of Malatiti's world record, and Jessica Hardy sets an American record, 29.8. Uh, keep in mind, Petra Chikova also gets disqualified. Jeff, walk us back through this 50 breaststroke. Yeah, before I do that, I just want to correct you on something. Matt Grievers tied with Jeremy Stravis for a second, so I just want to make sure you, that was corrected. But uh, moving on to the breaststroke, uh, it was very interesting. I mean, Ruta Melatiti has a .59 reaction time, so she's already winning before they even hit the water. And it looked like she had it for 35 meters, and then Yulia is just surging and surging and surging and surging. It's not that Ruta was getting tired. It's just that Ruta was surging harder to the wall. And uh, I just really was impressed with the way FMOVA swam. I mean, to win the 50 and the 200, um, I don't think anybody's ever done that in world championship history. And so um, I'm sure people who with, with bigger encyclopedic minds than me could, could confirm that. But in my recent memory, I don't think anybody's ever done that. And then, of course, I don't think anybody's ever done the 50, 100, and 200. So that's an amazing feat in and of itself. And uh, just like, an amazing accomplishment for her and yeah Ruta I think maybe um, I don't want to say overconfident but I think she just knew that Epimova was right next to her probably spun her wheels a little too much at the end to get to the wall yeah you're right we don't usually see that 5200 uh, double but 
you had the chance to talk to Rebecca Sony in there briefly. What what are her thoughts on watching the phenomenal breaststroke that's happened this weekend? She is just she's excited about it. You know, I don't think she was she's being very um, stingy about being the only one under 220 before this week. I think she when she did it, I think it's kind of like most people who break barriers. They're welcoming other people into it, and that's what happened a year later. So I think she's excited about it. I think it's it's kind of getting fire going in her, I guess. So um, I think that's that, that's exciting, and I think she's really um, probably getting ready to make plans for getting back in the pool. Yeah, good. That's positive. All right, well, next big event of the night for the men was a 400 IM. Japan's Diacito put together the winning race, 408-6, and Chase Kalish for second, 409. Jeff, Seto took the lead from the first 50 and didn't look back. Were you happy with the way this 4 IM played out? It was different than I thought it would play out. Um, you know, Diaceto has been kind of lurking this whole meet, but hasn't really done very well. Um, Kosuke Agino hasn't had the beat we thought he would. Uh, uh, so I kind of thought, if anything, Chase was going to really do something magical. And his only issue is that backstroke. He was so far behind, I just couldn't believe that there was any way he could get back into medal contention. But he's got a great last 200, and I think he needs to go back to... to Bob Bowman, North Baltimore, and to Jack Bowley of Georgia, and just really work on that backstroke, make it stronger, and make it better so that he can be able to push for world championship and in the future Olympic medals. Because uh, it's it's so it's got to be so um, debilitating mentally for him to look up after on the first stroke of breaststroke and see everybody so far ahead of him. Yeah, maybe he can talk to Caitlin Leverins on how she can usually keep her cool at that point. All right, back to the 50s. The women's 50 freestyle was a battle. Kromo Ijoyo back on top, 24.05, which is the exact same time she went in London for the gold. Kate Campbell second. Now, Jeff, Jeanette Otis and Gray, who you predicted to win, tied for fifth. And it just shows us that anything can happen in these 50s. Uh, anything really can happen. Were you surprised by that? Uh, I was surprised at Kromo Ijoyo. One, um, she did look as fresh in her hundred as I thought she would, um, but I think probably when you're, you know, like a lot of these Olympians, usually the shorter races they're better at. Um, Elizabeth Beisel, as we'll talk about later, is probably the one exception. But um, you know, a lot of these Olympians aren't doing well in their in their in the longer the longer of their events. So um, I guess Promo just really got it together. I was shocked that she was going 24-0. But I think she knew that she had to do that to be Kate Campbell. And I just got to say, for Kate, it's really good to see her doing so well five years after um, bronze in 2008 when she was 15, I believe. So, um, you know, she's still realizing her potential, and it's finally coming. And I hope it continues to Rio because um, Australia can really use her on relays and, and uh, to gain some momentum on the women's side for them. Yeah, Kate Campbell's had a great week. All right, long event of the night for the men, the 1500 freestyle. Sun Yang with another gold, but just barely in front of Ryan Cochran. Yang 1441 and Cochran 1442. Now, Jeff, after Sun Yang's performance in the 800, I don't think we were expecting to see anything too special tonight. But Connor Yeager 1447 and Michael McBroom 1453, were those best times for the USA boys? Yes, bus times for both of them. It's only two seconds off the American record for Connor, so he's got to be very encouraged about that. Um, Larson Jensen's American record of 14:45 is just absolutely amazing from 2008 because he was doing battle with Grant or 2004. Sorry, I think that's when it was, and he was doing battle with Grant Hackett in that race at the Olympics. And um, it's amazing that Connor's getting close to that only a year after officially being America's go-to guy in distance. Uh, and just to, to touch on Sun Yang and Ryan Cox. I mean, I'm, a, I, I'm amazed at Ryan Cochran's mental fortitude because there, any, a lesser person would have given up. They would have said, what's the point of me even trying to uh, continue in this sport when I'm racing Hackett and I get second? And then Sun Yang comes along and I'm getting second. Um, you know, it's like, I guess, anybody who swims against Phelps. You know, they're probably just like, I'm, I'm happy to get second to Phelps. But I think, I think Ryan wants first and... Um, unfortunately, today wasn't his day. I don't. I think maybe he thought that there was some a chance for him, and there may have been, but he just didn't break away from Sun Yang as he should have. He should have been, you know, three body lengths ahead, two body lengths ahead of Sun Yang after 1,400 meters to even have a chance. And 
I think he tried to break away, but Sun Yang just kept responding. Yeah, if, if any meat, this was the meat that he had to, to beat Sun Yang. All right, last individual event of the night for the ladies was the 400 IM. All right, Katinka Hoshu with the winning time, 430. And Maria Belmonte Garcia with a great swim for silver, 431. Both of these ladies considerably faster than their Olympic swims. But I'll tell you who was it, world record holder Yishi Wen. Not only 10 seconds off her time, but a seventh place finish. Now, pretty shocking when we've seen her having faster closing speed than two of the best swimmers in the world, Michael Phelps and Ryan Lochte. Jeff, I don't know what to think here, but I know what a lot of people are thinking after watching Yishi win this weekend. Yeah, they're thinking the drugs come into play in 2012. And, you know, it's one thing to, for her to go to the press or whatever and say, um, I'm tired, I had a rough Olympic year, and I just held back. Every Olympic champion who's been here has not been the equivalent of 10 seconds off their time in a 400. So that's what? That's about three seconds in a 100. Um, two, uh, five seconds in a 200. None of the Olympic champions are that far off their times. So it's, it's shocking. Um, and I, I guess, you know, as much as I was giving her the benefit of the doubt in London, um, that benefit of the doubt is, is slowly chipping away. And I'm not sure if I can give her that much longer if she can't prove to us that, you know, London was London was a fluke, and even Shanghai was a fluke. So, um, yeah, the questions are going to continue to come up, and especially when the uh, Olympic uh, bronze medalist Yi Zhuangzhu wasn't even at this meet. So, uh, where is she? So, you know, these are questions we've been asking for 20 years about the Chinese, and unfortunately, there these are questions we're still asking. Yeah, there's a lot of red flags up right now. Should be interesting to see how how the reports continue to roll out. All right, and Elizabeth Beisel in that race, pretty solid swim for her. You mentioned her earlier. Yeah, she was uh, three tenths slower than she was in London, and you know we've done interviews with her where she has said, "I just feel I had a horrible post Olympic year. She didn't swim that well at NCAA's, and so I was, I wasn't thinking she'd be under 4:33, and yet here she was going 4:31.7, right on her best time. So I mean, she's got to be extremely happy." Uh, I'm, I, I'm sure she wishes that, um, you know, Katinka and Maria weren't as fast because um, 431 is what won it in 2011. Uh, but uh, props to her. And, and, and if we can, just talk about Katinka for just a second. It took guts to be able to swim the way she did. To, she knew that she had to take it out hard. And I think she knew that she wanted to challenge the world record. That was probably the only way she was going to be able to try to go under 430. But to be two seconds under world record pace, even Yishi wins world record pace where she was going 59 at the end, I felt her pain. I really did. And it, I think she, I think her 400 IM lasted longer than it took for her to get out of the pool. That's how much she was hurting. Well, she's had an unbelievable last 12 months, so she's ready for a break. I'm sure her body's in a lot of pain. Yeah, I think she's going to actually do a couple World Cups before she takes a break, though. She's insane. All right, well, we wrapped up the meet with the 400 medley relay. As we discussed earlier, Team USA finished with a DQ. Kevin Cordes with the fast takeover. Mac Reavers, 53. Uh, this left France to win first and, uh, and Australia second. Jeff, the splits, I believe Adrian was a 46-6, and you said Lochte put together a solid 100 fly. Do you know what his split was around? I think it was 51 O's, what a lot of people were saying. Of course, I wasn't, I wasn't timing it, um, and I wasn't writing down the splits as they were coming in, but everybody around me was saying 51 O's, and I, and I kind of believe that it looked that solid and that fast. Yeah, unfortunately, that was a good swim across the board. But on the ladies' side, they still took the win. Missy Franklin a little quicker than her individual hunter back, 58-3. And Dana Vollmer put together a solid hunter fly after the way she's been swimming, 56-3. Uh, that was the fastest in the field. Jeff... It came down to the final awards, swimmers of the meet, Katie Ledecky and Soon Yang. I completely agree with Katie Ledecky. Do you think that's the same on the men's side? Oh, yeah. Sun Yang, obviously, he was the only person to win three events. And, and it's not based on, you know, like how we vote on swimmer of the year for Swimming World Magazine. It's not like, you know, you just look at the list and say, this is my pick. Uh, it's points. Uh, I think you get three points for first, second point, second, uh, two points for second, one point for third. And obviously that would put Missy Franklin ahead because she had four, uh, four individual, three individual golds. 
um, along with Katie, so they would have been tied, sorry. So um, there's also a, they get a point for a world record. So Katie got two points for her two world records. So it's it's purely objective. Yeah, great meet overall. What, what was your highlight of the eight-day event? Oh, gosh, you know, I had a feeling you were going to ask that. I was thinking about that before we started, and I just can't pick one. I can't pick one. Every day had a highlight. Every every session had a highlight. Just, you know, not just the winners, but the people who were, you know, making their first finals, like Hillary Caldwell getting a bronze for 200 back last night. I think that was a big moment for Canadian women because, you know, right now with the retirement of Brent Hayden, um, it was basically Canada was resting on Ryan Cochran's shoulders, and now I think they got Hillary Caldwell to look forward to. Um, I think the smaller countries um, winning medals, you know, Laszlo Che winning in the 100, getting a medal in the 100 fly still kind of rocks my world. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. Um, I can't pick one, Tiffany. I'm sorry. It's just, it's just, it was that fun of a meet to watch, and, and every every moment of it was just fantastic. Yeah, tough question. I didn't really expect you to have an answer. And I also think Cesar Cielo should be acknowledged on the men's side. He he had a great great meet as well. Absolutely. After two knee surgeries and now he's world champion twice over, defending both of his titles. Yeah, that that definitely deserves recognition. All right, Jeff. Well, thanks for joining us after e each session. Great work this week and have fun. Safe travels back to Arizona. Thanks, Stephanie, and thanks to everybody back at Phoenix for uh, helping out with all the coverage. All right, well, that's it for race day for the World Championships. Extra thanks to Jeff Cummings' live coverage from Barcelona, Jason Marsteller's fast editorial coverage, and Brett Rudemiller here in the studio. I'm Tiffany Elias. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.